Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Audrey. Today we are going to be talking about the Star Wars Lego Holiday Special. I can't remember the actual progression of words, but it's the Lego Holiday Special. So we're going to be talking about that. I'm going to give you a quick breakdown of what we saw and give you my brief thoughts on it. If you're new here, I do three videos a week. Tuesday, Friday, Sunday, Fridays, I do my Mandalorian breakdown videos. If you're new here, I'd love for you to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up while you're watching. Here's the video. Right off the bat, a change that was there is the Disney Plus Star Wars title card that has the different helmets and stuff. Lego Ray was added to the Disney Plus intro, I believe just obviously for this. She is the main character of this as are the sequel trio. They are the main focus, as well as Rose and Chewbacca. This is about Life Day, which is an interesting thing that they would do because the holiday special from the 70s was also about Life Day, and that you can't find George Lucas like burned copies that you cannot find the Star Wars holiday special because it was so atrocious. But um, if you have seen it, let me know how bad it is, because uh, I'd be very interested in finding those uh, clips from that, for sure. Life Day is about friendship, family, and connection. So the little sequel trio family is all gathering on Kashyyyk to celebrate Life Day, which Life Day is literally just the Star Wars equivalent of Christmas or the pagan Yule. It's basically being celebrated the exact same way as any of that. My main question was that Chewbacca's Wookiee family is still alive. I mean, Chewbacca's very old. Wookiees have a very long lifespan, but I would have assumed somewhere after the Clone Wars that Chewbacca's family wouldn't still be around. But I don't know that much about Chewbacca's... Like, the middle point between see him in Revenge of the Sith and when he shows up in A New Hope, I'm sure there's stuff in Solo. I actually, Solo's the one I haven't seen. I haven't seen it. If you think, do y'all think it's worth watching? I mean, I'm sure for Star Wars fans, it's worth watching. So I might check it out. The main thing is that Rey is training Finn to be a Jedi, which I really like. I think this is something they should have done in the live action, but when they saw how up in arms everybody was, that it wasn't in the actual live action that Finn didn't actually become a Jedi, they're like, well, we need to capitalize off this now, and we'll throw you a bone. We'll um, come back to uh, fan service or lack of fan service in a bit. The treating that Ray is doing for Finn, or Finn is doing with Ray watching at the beginning, is very similar to A New Hope. There is the little, I don't know what those things are called, but the little trading balls that are shooting different lasers at Finn. And he's having to blindly try to use the lightsaber, use the force to fight back. Poe cries a lot in this. Um, I do like that they made him kind of a softie because I do... Whoa, the lighting is... got dark in here. I, I definitely see Poe as a softie, so I like that they put that in there. He's... I don't know, I, I feel like he is really sensitive, so I appreciated that so much. Also appreciated the uh, BB-8 Christmas sweater. Rey leaves with BB-8 to head to the Jedi Temple on Kordoku because she's going to find her path by looking at the past. So she goes through a bunch of different, different past events with all of our favorite Star Wars characters. She first watches Yoda and Luke as Luke fails to raise the X-Wing out of the swamp. She sees Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan, I believe, before the events of Phantom Menace or before the the first scene in Phantom Menace. Obi-Wan and Anakin in the elevator before he sees Padme, they also put in that Anakin has flowers. They wanted to add that in there, you know, for a cute Lego aspect. And we get a hello there from Obi-Wan, so there's some more fan service for you. Then we go to the canyon run of the Death Star in A New Hope. They then go to the Death Star 2 in Return of the Jedi before Darth Vader goes to get Luke. And then that's when Darth Vader follows Rey through all of the other parts of the Skywalker saga. They first go to 
Hoth and Empire Stri in the beginning of Empire Strikes Back. Two Vaders fight each other, which is interesting, you know, and then they go to Anakin versus Obi-Wan, the finale of The Mandalorian Season 1, and they are all like, oh, Baby Yoda's so cute, which is the truth, he's adorable. They go to the Phantom Menace pod race. Didn't think I was going to be seeing much Phantom Menace. I did know that there was going to be young Anakin Skywalker there. Then they go to the end of Rise of Skywalker and the final thing with everybody there is Luke looking out at the twin sons drinking his blue milk. They put a blue milk jokes in this a lot that he's just constantly drinking his blue milk. So yeah, but it's out of like a little milk carton. There's a big fight that ensues between two solo, two Han Solos, a young and an old Han Solo, Greedo, which they then shoot him immediately, Darth Maul with no legs, four Anakins, I think, and three Obi-Wans. So there's a lot going on there, and there's some clone troopers and all that sort of stuff there. Palpatine and Vader then make a visit to Kylo Ren, and they poke fun at a lot of stuff from the sequel trilogy. There is shirtless Kylo Ren joke that they keep making. The They talk about how the mask and all of the stuff about Kylo is not original, which at least they can make lighthearted references to stuff that they created, because, uh, yeah, it's not. They end up going back to before the... It, during Return of the Jedi, and there's a fight between Rey, Kylo Ren, Palpatine, Vader, and two Lukes. So they fight each other, and Rey wins and all that stuff. They end up posting, putting a joke in about the take my hand from Kylo to, to Rey, which is funny. Uh, and she's like, yeah, I'm good. And she goes and puts everybody back into their actual spot and gets back to celebrate life day with the trio. And the trio is joined by Maz Kanata, Lando, Janna, Zori, Jawas, Greedo. Actually, I think it's just, it looks like it's supposed to be Greedo because he says McClunky. <laughs> but I think it's just a Rodian. Is that what that is? It looks like it's supposed to be Greedo, but I don't think it is because the time wouldn't make sense. Ewoks at Admiral Ackbar's son? Nephew, grandson. It's Admiral Ackbar's dead too. But he says it's it's a rap instead of it's a trap. I mean, there's supposed to be like these characters, but it's clearly not them. It's just references to them, so you know. Um, and then they go all dance around in a circle, and that's the end of the story. Also, at some point, Yo Force Ghost Lego Yoda mentors Ray to help show her all this stuff. Me thoughts. It was cute. It's like a leg. It's a little Lego movie. These movies are tacky. If you've seen any of them, it's not like the Lego movies. Like if you've seen any of the Lego stuff that comes onto Disney Plus or Netflix, like the straight to streaming Lego stuff, is tacky little kid stuff. Like this is what this is for. There's funny Star Wars jokes, which I can find funny. I'm trying to say funny already. And I'm not taking this too seriously because it's just, it's not, it's not serious. It's Legos <laughs> and it's Star Wars and Star Wars shouldn't be taken that seriously, but it is. So, you know, that being said, I wish Padme was in this. That being said, they, after skating around, trying to actually officiate, officially have Poe and Zori be together, they then have him kiss her helmet, which don't, it's just stop. This is a kid's stuff. Don't put any kissing in it. We're gonna go there. And that might be just my Finfo warrior heart, but, um, that made me mad. Because <laughs> it was unnecessary. I mean, they already abandoned Finn and Rose. They don't need to do that, so they didn't need it. It was unnecessary, so she didn't need to be in it. And I don't just not like her because of the implications, but also she's not interesting. She didn't provide anything new to the story. Like, Janna... I do like her, and she's an interesting character in the aspect that she's just a... She is kind of like a lady fin, but um, she's beautiful and I love her. She's also most likely, more likely than not, Lando's child, which was implied, so we'll see what we do from there. It's about on par with what I thought it was going to be. I do wish we did see more prequel stuff, 
in this. Not that I'm like the biggest prequel diehard fan. I, I like the original trilogy better, but I would like to, like to have seen it more. So I remember there being images with Obi-Wan and Anakin in their Christmas sweaters, but I don't remember seeing that. So was that just, did that just not make it in? What, what's going on there? So yeah, overall, yeah, pretty good, I guess. All right. I give it a two and a half or yeah, two and a half out of five. So about 50%. It's all right. So that's going to be it for it today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I would love for you to stick around and subscribe to catch my new videos. I do lots of stuff obviously on Star Wars because we are talking about Mandalorian every Friday on this channel as well as a lot of holiday videos coming up. So if you want to see more holiday videos and holiday film recommendations is coming soon as well, please make sure to subscribe and check it out and I will catch you in my next one. Bye!